The following podcast contains spoilers for Fatal Attraction and Brick. You have been warned. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of KFR News Radio. This is your host, Glenjamin Button, and your host, Miguel Megusto. Guten Morgen, mein Freund. Wie geht es Ihnen? I hear you've got some questions for me, uh, foreign speaker. Oh, you're jumping right into it. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, we got some questions for you. Yeah, give me that. Oh, I'm excited. fuck. It's waiting. always, why is it always an easy one? This this deck of cards is real. Tyler Durden is a character in which Brad Pitt movie? Troy. Troy, don't even joke. Don't even joke. Definitely not Achilles. Nope. No, no, it's not. It's Fight Club. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Get get out of here. Get out of here, card. (laughs) We we trusted you. These are like (laughs) five years ago. These questions would have been like, let's really test Glenn on his movie knowledge. (laughs) (laughs) I've trained you well, young Padawan. How you been, Glenn? How's things? How uh, how's How's life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness? Peachy dandy dundy dory. I just I just saw you less than uh, 24 hours ago. It was pretty yeah, great. Yeah, it's true. It is Actually, true. We yeah, less than 24 hours ago. We partook in a movie watching experience together. Oh my! Uh, which speaking of which, any good movies from last week you wish to talk about? I didn't see anything other than I watched a little more of the uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, the show. Mm-hmm. I watched mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. but other than that, I haven't watched anything but the movies we all saw together, uh, including this KFR mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll just go then. <laughs> you might as well. Uh, last week I actually had a pretty uh, pretty big week in movie watching. Um, the night we recorded the last podcast, uh, Caitlin and I watched Wine Country, which is directed by Amy Poehler. Uh, it's about oh, a it group of friends. By her. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's directed uh, directed by her, starring her and uh, a bunch of other female comedians like Rachel Dratch, Maya Rudolph, uh, Paula Pell. Um, and it's essentially about these middle-aged women that go on a uh, trip for one of their friends' 50th birthdays, and it's it's pretty funny. Um, I think it felt like it could have been a little bit funnier, but oh. it, it definitely... I lied. What? I did see oh. something. <gasps> oh, what'd you see? Um, let me make sure I didn't see anything else since, you know, my mind's blanking extra real yeah. hard. <laughs> All right, well, I, re- <laughs> I re-watched... Um, a little, old, you know, a little old movie back from 1988 called Oliver and Company. Mmm. Mm. It, it, I hadn't seen so it the, since the I was a, one, right? Yeah, I hadn't seen it since a, I was a little small child, and I wanted to see boss. it because it had a cat. So we rewatched and that. And dogs. And dogs. Yeah. It's got yeah, it's got dogs too. Does it hold up? I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, a lot of people would probably be offended by it, but I I think it holds up well. The, the songs are always uh, bopping. Yeah, a lot of people would be offended by a lot of things. So I think that that was the main reason it was really good yeah. in the first place was its songs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what is Bruce Springsteen, right? Uh, it was Billy Joel. Billy Joel, same person. Yeah, you know, they're the same. The exact same person. <laughs> identical and I in every just way. lost all of our Generation <laughs> X and Baby Boomer fans. Uh, <laughs> See you guys. Um, I'll see you. Uh, another movie I watched uh, is. Pokemon Detective de- de- Detective Detective Pikachu. Kira actually um, didn't want to see that, and I was a little surprised. What? Yeah, you should see it. It's honestly great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Even though it has Ryan Re- Ryan Reynolds' voice, Pikachu's adorable. Yeah. Um, the best th- way I can describe it is it's the world every kid wanted to live in in the nineties. Yeah. Uh, which was fantastic, and I really enjoyed it. It's not like a great movie, but it's it's a fun movie, and that's really all you can ask. Yeah, I have a day from, off tomorrow. Uh, I, might, I might see that. Yeah, yeah I, I think you should, and uh, let me know what you think. Okay. Uh, then I saw Tolkien, which is about J.R.R. Tolkien and uh, his childhood going into World War One and everything, and um, it's been getting s- some seriously mixed reviews from critics, but I absolutely loved it. Um, I could see where some of their complaints come in, because it's not so much about him writing the book yeah. as it is him growing up, and his friends and how talented his friends were, which I thought was a really, you know, interesting thing to focus on as far as, uh, you know, one of the most famous authors in the world. Um, but I absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorite movies of the year so far. Uh, so I suggest 
checking it out if if you want to. I actually heard there was a little bit of controversy with that movie that they didn't get like permission from the family of Tolkien to like get approved to do it. I believe that. Um, and while I can respect that at the same time, at what point at some point, someone's life kind of belongs to the public and as sensitive as a way I can put it. <laughs> yeah. And it was um, also it was it was like produced or executive produced by Stephen Colbert, too. Right. And he has the utmost respect for Tolkien in every single yeah. way. Absolutely. So I mean, um, it's not like it wasn't in bad hands or anything like that. No, no. And honestly, it, it did a, a great service to his character and everything. You know, it's it's a it's a wonderful film, and I, I understand why they'd be upset. I hope that you know they get what is owed owed to them if yeah. there is anything owed to them. But it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, then, as we discussed, uh, we saw John Wick Chapter Three Parabellum Ooh. together. Ooh, um, man! Oh, man! Was that yeah. a ride? That was a ride. Uh, if anyone's <laughs> if anyone's been with us since our, our YouTube video days, we did a re- video review of John Wick Two, uh, in which you loved and I was slightly disappointed by. Um, I think the more I thought about it, I had less love for it. But it was mainly for one aspect of the movie. Uh, not gonna n- name her name or anything, Ruby Rose, uh, or anything like that. Yeah, Ruby Rose. Um, but. Yeah, she definitely ruins the movie, but I, I think after watching, I rewatched both one and two on Friday before we saw this on Saturday, and uh, even then I was a little bit easier on chapter two. I enjoyed it more, and then yeah. when I saw three, I'm completely glad that chapter two was around because chapter three was fantastic, and uh, <laughs> I, I was telling you earlier, um, oh, you know what, I shouldn't say anything because I don't want to give any spoilers away, so never mind, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a really fun movie. Yeah, I, really, I did, I did really see fun. a comment that kind of like uh, that, that made me realize a little bit more. Like I was trying to like rank earlier which ones were the best for me, and then mm-hmm. I saw somebody kind of had a review on all all three of them, but it was like a real small one. It was one had the best setup, two had the best pacing, and three had the best sequences. Which I would completely I'd, agree with that. I would have to rewatch them all, but I'm pretty sure I agree with all yeah. that. And honestly, like they are so fluid that. I consider them all just one really long movie. Yeah. I know for ticket reasons and, and budget reasons, they had to split it up into three movies. But mm-hmm. like, just just give me John Wick. The, the fact that they call it chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, etc., just kind of shows exactly, exactly what kind of movie it is. It's more. Yeah. Instead of, instead just of like one being movie. acts or anything like that, it's just. Yeah. Chapters, which is really. Yeah. It really fits. And, yeah. And I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm I really enjoyed it. Like uh, it, and then, it is doing that right now, like chapter two. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be like the same thing. And I, I sincerely doubt it that it will. But that'd be cool if it did that, too. I kind of hope not. I hope it just ends with two for it. Um, just because that's the book and the other, you know, the story. But, you know, who, who knows anymore with with uh, move, movie franchises for real. They'll make some cinematic universe or something and make me want to vomit. I mean, I mean um, hell, they're making Angel Has Fallen. Jesus Christ. Although those movies, I will admit, I, they're bad, but I enjoy watching them at least once. I, they're good popcorn movies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then last night I watched my last non-KFR movie, which was American Movie. Uh, it's a documentary about these um, this guy in, I, th- I want to say Wisconsin, trying to make a short film. And, uh, you know, just his aspirations and his persistence in becoming a filmmaker. And boy, did it hit close to home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it would. Yeah, because the entire time he's trying to make a short film and, you know, running into all these problems, more problems than I've probably ever had making a short film. But he's probably I don't want to say he's more ambitious than me, but he definitely has uh, bigger ideas. And he was also shooting on film, which is more difficult than shooting on digital. Oh, absolutely. He, there's at one point where he's talking about like being 30 years old and having having achieved nothing in his life. And I was like, is that me talking? <laughs> Who am I? Who uh, stole uh, yeah. this guy's identity, which yeah. is me? <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a great great uh, documentary. The two uh, main subjects are Mark uh, Borchart, um, who is the main he's the director, and then his friend Mike Shank, who is this uh, he's a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. But you can see that the drugs have done their toll. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he's just like a really sweet dude and really funny, and I, I, they're just really likable characters. Um, even when they're kind of being assholes, they're they're still kind of endearing in a way. Um, 
Well, yeah, that's all I saw last week. Uh, well, so shall we go. get into it? Shall look we get into you it? Go. No, no, we shall. No, we shall. Okay, let's <laughs> start with Fatal Attraction. A look that led to an evening. We were attracted to each other at the party. That was obvious. You're on your own for the night. That's also obvious. A mistake he'd regret all his life. And where's your wife? here with a strange girl being a naughty boy. I don't think having dinner with anybody is a crime. I've got to see you. This is going to stop. No, it's not going to stop. It's going to go on and on. She keeps calling the apartment. Hello? Every time Beth answers the phone, she hangs up. I'm scared, Jimmy. You play fair with me? Do you have an affair with her? I'll play fair with you. I don't want to lose my family. Why could you do that? You're scared of me, aren't you? You're afraid. Fatal Attraction, made in 1987. Fatal Attraction stars Michael Douglas, Glenn Close, and Ann Archer. Directed by Adrian Lin and written by James uh, Dairden. And also, yeah. there's a screen or a short film. Same thing. I don't know what that is. But yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess he he made a short film and then they based a feature off of it, but didn't let him uh, direct it, which isn't unheard of. But you know, wh- yeah, whatever. Well, um, Fatal Attraction's about a married man's one-night stand come back to haunt him. What? A married man's one-night stand comes back to haunt him when that lover begins to stalk him and his family. Whoa. Famer, family. Family. <laughs> Did you have a stroke on your drive back to Virginia? Dude, I'm exhausted. I can imagine. <laughs> Like it, I didn't even I didn't even stop to go home and relax. I just went straight to the grocery store afterwards. Ooh, ooh. Mm. I like I picked her up. I was like, get in, and we left again. So <laughs> I'm a little exhausted, but I I wanted, yeah. I wanted to nail this today. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, uh, so what did you think of this? Since this is your uh, your selection. All right. All right. So, uh, Fatal Attraction. To be honest, uh, I I always get this mixed up with Basic Instinct and. This I thought it was Basic Instinct. I get it. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's one of a bunch, and even more than just Basic Instinct, it's one of a bunch of like sex crime thrillers. Yeah. Um, so I that, mean, regardless, that this, in was, the 80s. this was still going to be on my list to watch. Um, yeah, eventually in life. So I mean, we're getting into it now. So Michael Douglas uh, and Glenn Close, they're both terrific actors. Mm-hmm. When even in not this movie. So this movie, they were both fantastic. Glenn Close, especially. She can really sell crazy, and Definitely. it's it's very scary, especially in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. For for what most part is a very very simple plot. Basically, the man has a one night stand, and then he stuck his dick in crazy. That's <laughs> pretty much the plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that's about right. Yeah, but I mean the plot's super simple. I mean, hell, the synopsis was pretty much a sentence. Um, but it, this movie really is good for the for the acting for the yeah. cast itself yeah um i was actually i don't want to say surprised but i i had no idea that this was nominated for uh, six academy awards seriously uh, it was Whoa. yeah it was it was nominated for uh best editing uh which i completely agree with that some pretty great editing uh best writing uh based on a, another medium uh, best director, best actress in supporting role, best actress in a leading role, and then best picture. I could um, see be- best actress because, like I said, Glenn Close really she sells it. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. I think Ann Archer in supporting role. Yeah, was, she's uh, she's fantastic too. She, yeah, she had. I I don't know if I. I mean, granted, I don't know what the uh, that the year other the competition was. Um, yeah, uh, it just. Um, let's see. Supporting actress. She had. Uh, it went to Olympia Dukakis in Moonstruck. There's also Anne Southern uh, in the uh, the Wales of August, Anne Ramsey in Throw Mama from a Train, uh, okay. and uh, Norma Alejandro for Gabby, a True Story. So it's pretty uh, good competition. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I've heard of Moonstruck and the Wales of August. I haven't seen either. Oh, and and Throw Mama from a Train. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're all uh, yeah, pretty good competition. Um. I I had I saw that before I started watching it, and I was kind of just waiting for her to do something, for lack of a better phrase, uh, impressive. <laughs> like, yeah. 
it was and then when uh you know towards the end it got a lot more she got a lot more impressive she, um, she was mainly but, there to just smile and be a good wife i guess until yeah the for the first end. the first act or two she yeah. was uh you know just your typical uh unknowing wife and um yeah, they, they, there's great acting all around. Um, I still am a little shocked that it was nominated for so much, but yeah, oh, no, that is goodness. what it is. I, I scrolled down on the IMDb, DP, oh, Jesus Christ, IMDb page, and I'm looking at all the uh, movies that are more like this. And I don't mm-hmm. know what it is with Michael Douglas, but he's in a lot of sexy scandal movies here. So yeah. Basic Instinct was pretty much kind of the same thing. It was him and Sharon Stone in a little sexy scandal movie. Yeah, uh, Disclosure, which is another one with Demi Moore. I don't know if this is one, the per- a Perfect Murder. I don't know if there's any sex scandals, but it's him and two people seductively kissing each other, so that's nice. Oh, yeah, I'm going to guess that there's something about that. So, okay, good uh. for him. Good for him in the <laughs> 80s and 90s going yeah. for that. I, I would say um, Glenn Close and Michael Douglas had great chemistry in this. Like, mm-hmm. you, you totally... You know, they didn't have to explain much about his married life to uh, show why he would, as a person, uh, you know, go and do this. Um, I mean, they did they did show enough. It definitely yeah, not enough was, to just justify it, but they, oh, yeah. they never asked to justify it. It was there a guy is, that made a mistake. There's a nice little hint where their, their kid was, like, sleeping in their bed for the night, and he was hoping to, you know have some fun with his wife that night and then she's yeah. like oh it's just for tonight yeah but they they never i mean so it was, even it was even like he hint. never justifies it yeah, he, he it's never, never he, it's never justifiable he calls it a mistake from the get-go which uh you know was refreshing uh i i feel like they probably could have done more to make glenn close's character a little more sympathetic i think that would have been uh, a nice touch um yeah but it, do, it doesn't need it it would have just been you know a nice depth Mm-hmm. Uh, other than her just being one hundred percent crazy, yeah, um, she she goes she's straight up she's nice she's like seems like a nice chick and then she goes into crazy mode and she's like, oh, we need to spend some more time together. You think you could just kick me to the side? Hey, I'm I'm, I'm pregnant. Uh, yeah, you have to be responsible for this. Yada yada. Which you never find out if it's true too if she's pregnant or not. Yeah, um, you really don't. Because they they hint that he called the doctor and the doctor was kind of just told that he was uh that she was pregnant mm-hmm. um but you never find a test or anything you see you see a yeah. pregnancy test but you don't see like uh, anything like yeah, you see it mean, in the, like a medicine cabinet but you don't see like yeah. anything approved that he is i mean he never denies it either like he never says that she's lying or anything Again, which is nice, especially for the 80s when it was all about women being liars. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, but it, it's still like in my mind, just knowing how it uh, that, you know, she would go crazy and go down this rabbit hole. I kind of doubted it from the get go just because I knew who her character was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of nice that they never revealed either way whether or not she was telling the truth to kind of make the whole movie this gray area um for at least michael douglas's character <coughs> i will say at one point glenn Co- oh, jesus glenn close did go a little over the top with her acting and it was at the very end of uh, her her lifespan as the character when she's being drowned in the tub and she rolls back <laughs> her eyes I thought that was a little See, over the top. That I kind of think was a, a director's choice because at yeah. one point it looked like contacts. Yeah. Um, I thought she was definitely w- rolling her eyes. Oh, no. Yeah, that that was over the top. But whether or yeah. not it was her or the director, I'm not sure of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just there, there was one part where it legitimately looked like just contacts. Like you mm-hmm. could see the color difference between uh, where... Her, you know the the white part that was covering her iris and pupils, and uh, the the whites of her eyes. Um, yeah, like when that was happening, I couldn't help but laugh to be like, "All right, listen, she's a fantastic like a fantastic actress." But oh yeah. like that was a little over the top. <laughs> oh yeah, and I mean we we talked about it uh, yesterday too after people were laughing in the trailer for it. Where, uh, like, when you're watching it as a fly on the wall, as you do with, with movies, yeah, 
terrifying things can be kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're the person in it, like in Michael Douglas's case, it, if that actually happened, I probably wouldn't be thinking she was being over the top. I would <laughs> think she was, uh, you know. But yeah, I completely agree. It, it definitely took took you out of the moment for a bit. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those one of those things that uh, don't is a a good idea, but didn't translate well on film. Yeah. Um, so at any point, did you think the dog was going to die? Anytime I see a dog and I know it's a horror movie or a thriller movie, I'm like, if that dog fucking dies, we're done here. Yeah. Not really, but we're, <laughs> well, we're I saw, done here. I saw like the dog. And I'm like. <sighs> Ooh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But luckily, no dogs were harmed in the making of this film. Yes. However, yeah, there other was a creatures rabbit. were. <laughs> there, yeah, the rabbit was... Uh, I felt bad for the rabbit. I'm just kind of... I don't know. I'm tired of movies that kill animals for shock value. Yeah. Um, just because I've seen so many le- re- recently. Uh, I, I was relieved that it was the rabbit and not the dog, but I still felt bad for the rabbit. Because mm-hmm. it was a pretty cute rabbit. Um but yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a it's it's an easy way out to show that this person is dangerous without harming a person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel like they could have just movies in general, not not just this movie. They could come up with a uh, more clever idea than just killing an animal or harming an animal. They could. Yeah. But you're right. But yeah, it I'm is, so, it I'm is glad the easiest that, way to show somebody is. A goddamn lunatic. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad that they did not kill the dog, though. So Yeah, seriously. And he was an old pup, too, so I was going to feel uh, real sad. He was a cutie, like that too. That son bitch deserves to live his life he was the just, rest of the he way. He was just a good little boy that, that wagged his tail when he wanted to go out. It was so cute. <laughs> did they? I was, I was actually about to say, did they ever find the dog after, like, he acted like he had a heart attack in the park? And then I remembered he was at her apartment after that. So, yes. Yeah, because he kind of ran off after the dude was acting like he was having a heart attack. What dude was acting like he had a Dan, heart attack? When he was acting like he was having a heart attack in the uh, park, then the the dog kind of oh, just yeah, ran yeah, off. Yeah, 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 that's right. Completely forgot about that. But yeah, he uh, and then they show him back or yeah. later earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much to say about this movie. It's it's, a, it's a good movie. Uh, I think it has not aged terribly well. Um, but, you know, I can definitely see the appeal and, and uh, looking at what it was up against and other movies from the year. I understand why it was nominated for so many Oscars. You know, the, there's a reason that it's still sticking around after all this these years, um, even if it's not quite the greatest thing. <laughs> so, yeah, um yeah, I feel the same way. Like, it, it was one that was going to be on my list, and I was like, eh, it's not one that I need to jump to. And when I thought it was Basic Instinct, I was like, well, I might as well hop on to it, because I hear a lot of good things about Basic Instinct. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. <sighs> uh, it, it's just one of those genres that I don't have too much interest in. Yeah. Um, and there's no but, blame uh, there. There's none. Yeah. We'll see. If you ever come near my family again, I'll kill you. You understand? Gonna be ignored. Alicia, where's Ellen? She's gone. Call the police. Whatever resentment she's feeling, she's probably got it out of her system. Ah! What if she didn't get it out of her system? What then? Ah! Fatal attraction. I guess you thought you'd get away with it. Well, you can't. Uh, shall we move on? We shall. Let's move on to Brick. Brendan? Emily? I really screwed up. Screwed up how? The brick. What? I, I didn't know it was bad, but the pin's on it now. You gotta help me. Slow down now. This isn't good? No. Emily said words I didn't know. Tell me if they catch. Brick? No. Tug? Tug might be a drink, like milk and vodka. Pin? You know the kingpin. Dope bro, right? Big time. What are you gonna do? She asked for my help. I just wanna know if she's okay. So what's first? I'm gonna start shaking things up. So you didn't know this boy? No, sir, never seen him. 
man, he just hit you. But he asked for my lunch money first. Written and directed by Ryan Johnson, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, Nora Zahetner, Lucas Haas, Noah Fleiss, Matt O'Leary, etc. Uh, Brick tells the story of a teenage loner who pushes his way into the underworld of a high school crime ring to investigate the disappearance of his ex-girlfriend. Um, it was released in 2005 and is, uh, I believe it's Ryan Johnson's directorial debut, at least for a feature it is. Um, yeah. Oh, what? Hold on a second. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's his first his first uh, feature film, and uh, yeah, what did you think of it? I I want to hear your thoughts since I had seen it previously and uh, didn't remember much. Well, when you told me Ryan Johnson, I was like, oh, Mike, you know what he did to Star Wars? Like, I'm not that kind of person who shits on him for Star Wars. He I tried something different with Star Wars. <laughs> it didn't work. Move on. Yeah, I. I, I <laughs> I don't give a shit if people think he ruined Star Wars or not. But that's not what we're talking We're talking about Brick. I thought this was an awesome movie. Um, I feel like it it was like one of those like uh, detective noir type movies, except for it was just yeah. a bunch of high schoolers. Yeah. Um, which, it, was which kinda, was, it was kind of like a bunch of high schoolers had watched movies like The Maltese Falcon, yeah. uh, Third Man and all that, and then just decided all together, whether subconsciously or consciously, to all that act gonna like... that's going to be their world. <laughs> that's going to be their world, exactly. Um, yeah, I thought it was, it was actually, it was really funny and it was a nice, kind of, it was really a nice uh, breath of fresh air uh, instead of just being like... A detective noir movie it was just like it was something new it, they put a different spin on it yeah and it was it was a lot of fun yeah and and the, it, it they have everything from like the way it's shot uh to the music that makes it feel like a noir as well um you know it's got kind of a uh, uh cheesy campy soundtrack in a way not that it's bad it just kind of you know fits that world yeah um complete with the over-the-top villain two and villains the, and really the acting on top of it as well yeah, the the acting, and it's just it's just a really fun and funny and but also kind of sad and depressing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just, really sad and depressing. <laughs> yeah, and, and the fact I think last week we talked about how um, the lack of teachers in a teenage movie kind of ruin it. Yeah, this I did not feel that way, but that's also just the world that it is. It's not supposed yeah. to be like a real realistic school. Yeah, there's a uh, huge difference between this world in high school and like the other movie that all the boys I loved before. They're two like that one literally takes place like in a high school. Like that's its world. Like these are students and shit like that. This they don't feel like they're students. Yes, the, the setting is a high school and they are students, but it doesn't make them feel like they are students with yeah. teachers surrounding them. And sh although there, I see more teachers in this or vice principals technically in this movie than I did see in to all the boys I love before. Yeah. And at the very weird. least, yeah, at the very least, there's more references to teachers on this too. Exactly. Uh, like they, they'll, they'll talk about how, um, in one in one scene, the brain says that uh, one teacher took his phone and everything. Just little little nods like that. Uh, but you're absolutely right. The uh, the he's not even the principal. He's the assistant vice principal, <laughs> um, who who's really the only adult in this, and uh, it, it just adds more to the world that they're kind of stuck in their own little own little world and and running things how they would run it without parents uh there is um the, uh that one character's mom though who, uh, the pin the pin's mom yeah, the is pin. in it um but that's that that's just kind of a funny gag more than anything yeah how she makes some, she around. makes some sandwiches and and cereal <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> they're trying to have this serious conversation mm -hmm. about uh you know joining a jug a drug ring ring <laughs> and <laughs> his mom's just like do you want milk you want any milk? Or, oh, no, you got you milk in your cereal. Juice? How, about, you want some how, how juice? about apple juice? I have apple juice. <laughs> Just to remind you that these are kids and not, not adults mm -hmm. uh, in, in this world. Um, I thought the cinematography was great, too. You yeah, know, it really was. This uh, was shot for a budget of 475000 which is very small for a feature film. Um, I mean, it's not Napoleon Dynamite numbers, but it's still... It's still small. Yeah, it's still small. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was popular enough then to ask for more than a million dollars, probably. Um, 
with with Third Rock from the Sun and everything. But uh, he he he, he uh, you know worked on a budget here. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I glad I rewatched it because I remember really loving it when I first watched it. Probably I want to say ten years ago um, when I first watched it, and yeah. I, I remembered it being kind of like a noir. I remember the pin as a character, uh, just because Lucas Haas is very memorable. Um, but other than that, I didn't remember too much of it, and uh, yeah, I'm, I really enjoyed it again. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice, uh, like I said earlier, it was a nice breath of fresh air. Uh, I, I really enjoy like detective type movies, so it was it was really funny to see like just high school students instead of like you know actual detectives or like middle aged yeah. men running exactly. around. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he was extremely awesome in this movie. Normally, like, I, I, I like Joseph Gordon-Levitt a lot, but, like, I don't go out of my way to see his movies, and he, mm-hmm. was, he was great in this. Yeah. Um, I, I, just, I, I just found out the, uh, I'm looking it up now, the cinematographer, uh, S- Steve Yeldon, or Yedlin, uh, Ryan Johnson took him all the way with him. He, he was actually the cinematographer of Star Wars The Last Jedi. Oh. So s- say what you want about that movie, but Ryan Johnson is loyal as fuck, and, you know, I respect that more than I do people who complain. It wasn't even that bad, though. It wasn't. Like, I didn't love it, but, you know, they tried something different. It didn't work out as much as it should have or could have, but we see, we got Star Wars movies. Why, do, why are you complaining? And we're still getting more. It's going to be okay. Yeah, if you like the book universe more, then just keep reading books. Don't stop. You stop. fucking nerd. Just stop. <laughs> Get help. Uh, but I mean, honestly, I don't have too much to say about this movie. I did have a lot of fun with it. It was it was really it was really cool to watch. Um, just Gordon Levitt was awesome, and so was the rest of the cast. Like even most of the supporting cast, they were all fun. They were all fun and very talented. Um, yeah. I, I kind of love the uh, archetype character, like uh, uh, Tugger, who who is played yeah. by Noah Fleiss, just being like a complete brute, doesn't yeah. think. Just and and uh, honestly, it has a uh, more of a twist than a lot of movies too. Not that it's like a huge twist, it does. but when you find out that um, it was Noah Fleiss that m- most likely killed Emily, uh, or who is it? Who who ended up killing? Was it Laura, or did Laura just set her up? I think she set her up, and then Tugger killed her out of anger. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that, that's what I remember from it. But um, you know, the entire time you think it's gonna be the pin or something or or whatever or even Dode, um, but it's it's a real, it's it's a pretty interesting mystery as as ridiculous of a concept as it is. Um, you know, keeps you keeps you intrigued. <laughs> it really does. Especially yeah. <laughs> on a uh, Friday afternoon when I watched it. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was really fun. You're coming into a certain situation. It's twisted. I'm looking for Emily. You left her? Yeah, I did. You better be sure you want to know what you want to know. Complicated. Everyone's got their thing. When the upper crust does shady deeds, they've got symbols so they can tell each other that we're getting around. Coffee and pie. Coffee and pie. Oh my. Keep up with me now. You got a cigarette? No, I don't smoke. I've seen you smoke. I don't smoke cigarettes. I thought we had orange juice. I'm sorry. Water's fine, ma'am. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. We have apple juice. It's country style. If I get to the bottom, whatever this is. What do you want? Just a seat. It's too hot. You got a discipline issue with me? Write me up or suspend me. I see that you're trying to help her. And I don't know anybody who would do that for me. You are dangerous. I set out to know, put her on the spot. I put her in front of the gun. There's not much chance of coming out clean. Yeah, we've had a real short episode this week. I'm kind of that's kinda what happens it. when uh when you have two really good movies, and you don't need to talk about them; they just speak for themselves. Yeah, they really do. Um, 
They they really do. So let's get into the judgment, shall we? Let's start with Fatal Attraction. All right. Well, since it's mine, I will obviously go first. Uh, Fatal Attraction had a fantastic cast, an uh, easy plot to go with, uh, and uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> I uh, I do feel as much as I I did enjoy the movie. I don't think it was shelf worthy. I don't think it was a shelf boy. Uh, Michael Douglas and Glenn Close, their those two, their chemistry was awesome and all that. But I feel like, oh, it, it doesn't need to be on here. It's there's a whole genre of that that we could watch that probably will like Basic Instinct. It might, but we're not there. This ain't no Basic Instinct. I say no so. so so regardless of what I think. Fatal Attraction does not make the shelf boy. What the uh, hell do I would, you think? I, I, the I, hell? Well, I was getting into that, Glenn. What the I hell was do getting you think? into that. <laughs> just reminding everyone that it needs to be <laughs> unanimous. Uh, and I, I would agree. I, I think uh, Glenn Close, Michael Douglas, both fantastic. Uh, Ann Archer is also fantastic. Um, the little girl who plays Ellen is even good. Uh, the story is compelling. The chemistry between all the characters is great. Um, but overall, it's just, you know, not terribly interesting or noteworthy. Uh, I would say the bathroom scene where Glenn Close's character gets killed is probably the most memorable thing. Um, and that is, you know, every time I, I knew that that was going to happen because that's the only part I ever hear people talking about. Um, I knew that this crazy woman was trying to kill Michael Douglas's wife. I didn't know why. But yeah, so I would agree. I think... Uh, it's not particularly memorable enough to be a shelf boy either. So Fatal Attraction does not make it onto the shelf and unanimous decision. And let's get on to Brick. Uh, despite what anyone here thinks of Ryan Johnson before Last Jedi, even if you dislike Jedi, even if Last Jedi, even if you blame him for ruining your memory of star wars even though the originals are still around regardless of whether or not the less jedi exists he has made good movies he made looper he made uh oh, he did Bloom. make looper yeah oh man yeah he's he, he's come on he's made guys. good movies yeah and joseph and Brick, was in that too yeah so Brick was one of those great movies uh so i would say yeah it does deserve to go on the shelf i also think that and that is a shelf boy right there, everybody. So, Fatal Attraction does not make it on the shelf. Brick does make it on the shelf. Uh, we got two more movies for next week. Uh, my film that I will pick and have everyone watch is uh, it's available on Netflix. It is called Gosford Park. Uh Written by Robert, sorry, directed by Robert Altman, written by Julian Fellows, uh, based on the idea by Ryan Altman. There's one more guy here. Oh, and based upon the idea also of Bob Balaban, it is starring a shit ton of people. You want to hear some of these people, Glenn? Give me them. We got Maggie Smith, Michael Gambon, Kristen Scott Thomas, Camilla Rutherford, Charles Dance, Geraldine Somerville, Tom Hollander, Natasha Whiteman, Jeremy Northam, Bob Balaban. James Wilby, Claudie Blakey, Blakely, Lawrence Fox, <laughs> Trent Ford, Ryan Philippi, Stephen Fry, Clive Owen, Kelly McDonald, Helen Mirren, Emily Watson. We got a shit ton of people. Richard E. Grant. Wow. This is just, this is just, it's a bunch of people that we it know. It is a lot of people. That's insane. <laughs> uh, and at, at Gosford Park tells the story of the lives of upstairs guests and downstairs servants at, at a party in 1932 in a country house in England as they investigate a murder involving one of them, um, uh, despite its uh, depressing sounding description. It is supposed to be a comedy, so it's probably very dry and very British, uh, but I'm looking so forward to it. Clue. Clue, but different. <laughs> it's super clue. <laughs> super clue, yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's available on Netflix. Netflix sponsor us. Please. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Gosford Park. Glenn, what's your movie? Okay, I actually, if you heard me clicking on my keyboard and my mouse and all that, um, I did just change mine last second. So it was <laughs> going to be something else. Uh, I, I, I think I could tell you. I was going to pick Deliverance. It had Burt Reynolds in it. Ooh, that was going to be weird. You said, let's get weird. Or no, you said, it's going to be weird. And I said, let's get weird. So and I'm a little so, bummed that we're not going to get weird. Okay, we can either do that, or I have a movie from the 1950s, uh, and it's from one of your favorite directors. So, Oh, oh, you bastard. 
So you I'm bastard. stuck because I, I would I would like to see the one that I'm, I switched to. Uh, or we can watch Deliverance. So, Strangers on a Train or Deliverance. Ooh, oh. Strangers on a Train. All right, there you uh, go. I, We're not I want to rewatch both of them. I want to watch both of them. But, but yeah, we can, we can watch Strangers on a Train. Okay. I think that's more palatable for people. Okay, okay. So, yeah, mentioned, so uh, Strangers got, on a Train. And let me look up the I'm yeah. Umdeba to give a we good got, synopsis. We got so. double murder movies this week. Look at that. Uh a psychopath forces a tennis star to comply with his theory that two strangers can get away with murder. Oh my God! What is mm-hmm. what is going on the last like couple? We're going crazy with these murder things. I think I know it, Glenn. I think I know it. We need to murder more people. Just kidding! Don't murder more people. I uh, I do not condone murder. Uh, just in case anyone uses this as their excuse for murdering someone, I do not condone this. Please don't uh, soundbite us. <laughs> I am now legally unli- in liable, unliable, not liable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't murder people. Don't murder people. It's crazy. Yeah. Other people do it, and you want to watch a movie about it? Sure, go for it. It's all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so yeah, it was directed what, what, what by the stats. Uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Um, written by Raymond Chandler. Stars uh, Farley Granger, right? Granger, Granger, uh, Robert Walker, and Ruth Roman. Nineteen fifty one. This movie was made. My lord. And this is on yeah. Netflixio. Netflix sponsors. Or if you're crazy like me, it's also on Blu-ray. Uh, I don't know if it's on anything yeah. else right now, but uh, have you it's seen it before? On Netflix. I have not. Okay. I have I have it on DVD as well, but it's definitely on Netflix. And I want yeah. to give people a chance to, you know, see it. Well, I'm excited to rewatch it. I was hoping when you said it's one of my favorite directors, it was one of them that I hadn't seen, but yeah. it's fine. It's all good, you know. So that will do it for us this week. As always, you can follow us on Instagram at Keystone underscore film underscore review. Facebook, we are Keystone Film Review on Letterboxd. I almost forgot the name of it. Letterboxd. <laughs> I am Mike KFR. And I am Glenn KFR. And that will do it for this week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.